Well, yeah, you're hearing, when you read the Apostle Paul's letters, you're hearing the outcome of his ability to overcome difficulty. But you're not necessarily, like, he's not expressing all the details of what he's going through. So did you, when you were doing the research for this, did you come across stuff that said, oh my gosh, it's worse than I thought what he was going through. Did you guys actually get into the, the, the prisons that he was in, what the, what the life was like at that time uh, to, to be imprisoned, I mean, what he was actually going up against? Well, I actually visited the, what's traditionally known as Paul and Peter's prison. And, you know, it's, it's right there near the Vatican. And uh, you go down there, I'm, I'm right about six feet tall, and I had to duck my head to stand in the <coughs> dungeon. And uh, you see this, the size of the blocks in the wall, you realize that it's underground and there was no light. They got in. Um, they tell you that to get in there, not that they have steps now that go down in there, but at that time, you had to be lowered through the ceiling. And so I, you just start extrapolating from that and saying, you know, it, it, and this is the, the challenge and the fun of being a novelist. Regardless of who I'm writing about, whether it's a child or a, or a woman or a man or whatever, whatever age and whatever time period, I have to be that person. So I have to imagine myself as, as Paul. Uh, being sentenced to that place and sitting in that dungeon with no light and being fed, you know, the historical resources say that he would have been fed less than a slave was fed. So tw twice a day he would get this bowl of gruel, cold gruel, and they didn't care if people died. Just break that down for me, gruel. It's basically broth with, with maybe bits of stale bread in it, and, and the bread would have been... Uh, probably rancid, and it might even have had insects in it. That might have been the only protein he got. Um, now, I sort of invent the idea, because he writes about the fact that only Luke is with me. Um, Luke, being a physician, would have gotten in to see him, and maybe um, we invent also the fictional construct that um, he's, he's keeping Paul alive so that he can be executed. He's a prize prisoner. They want to show off that they've got the head of the snake, and so... Uh, they don't want him to die like the other prisoners who basically starved to death there. So uh, he gets a little more food. Luke is allowed to bring him things and, and as a physician to check on him. And, and, uh, and Paul is saying to Luke, keep me alive so I can die, which is a terrible thing to ask of a friend. But the point is, what he wants is he knows as a Roman citizen they can't um, execute him inside the prison walls. So they're going to have to drag him outside the city to chop his head off. And to Paul, in a strange way, this is good news because the one thing that he has missed during these months in, in captivity is he can't preach. And that's all he wants to do. He wants one last chance to preach. And so he's saying, keep me alive for this spectacle they want to do because it'll give me a chance to share the gospel again. I mean, yeah. think about that as a mirror.